The Society of Actuaries Research Institute recently released an updated survey on group life COVID-19 mortality in the United States based upon two full years of data collected from industry from April 2020 through March of 2022. And with the COVID pandemic, the estimated group life claim incidence rates for that period were obviously up noticeably compared to a baseline that was created from studying mortality from 2017 through 2019 reported claims. Approximately 13% of all reported group life claims with death dates in that pandemic period were determined to have a cause of death of COVID-19. And Steve, let me ask you, you know, what was the level of excess mortality that was actually indicated by this survey for group life carriers for those recent periods? And, and are there any noticeable changes since the prior group life survey that we issued about six months ago? Well, for the entire two-year pandemic period that we're talking about, Dale, um, our survey has indicated about a 21% mortality spike by count as compared to the pre-pandemic mortality levels. And that 21 would have been a little bit higher if we were talking about face amounts. And actually that's about essentially the same as the 21% spike we were looking at six months ago when it was just the first 18 months of data through September of 21. So that tells us October of last year through March of this year was also in the 21% spike range on a claim count basis. I will point out though, that it was not a level 21% over the most recent six months. It was really more like 25% mortality spike in fourth quarter of last year, down below 20 in the first three months of this year. And then one other notable item is uh, actually a couple reasons for optimism. If we were gonna drill in and, and look at the granular monthly data, and I think just looking at the first three months of 2022, we would have seen January at a pretty high excess 32%, February down to 16, and then March down to just a 12% mortality spike. So kind of a continual decrease in that excess mortality. Um, and then the final reason for optimism would be kind of some sneak preview data that we have access to the April and May reported results for our 20 participating carriers. If we factored that in, we would actually be saying that first quarter of this year was just a 16% mortality spike as compared to pre-pandemic. Uh, so that's well below the 21% cumulative and it's the best quarter that we've had in, in a number of quarters. So Patrick, let me ask you, how did this excess mortality in the group life survey data compared to you know, what we're hearing about or what we're seeing when we talk about excess mortality in the US population as a whole, and, and what are some of those relationships and how have they changed during the pandemic? Well, using estimates from the CDC, the excess mortality for the U.S. population as a whole over the pandemic period was approximately 18%, which is lower than the 21% cited by Steve for the group life survey population. However, that relationship has not remained consistent over the entire pandemic period. We saw in the first two quarters of the pandemic, the second quarter and third quarter of 2020, that the group life excess mortality was actually lower than that of the U.S. population. But the U.S. population has shown higher excess mortality than group life in every quarter since. Now, there is something of an exception to that for the first quarter of this year, because as Steve mentioned, as we collect more data, that first quarter of 2022 becomes more fully complete. And we ultimately expect the first quarter of 2022 to settle in with lower excess mortality in the group life survey than the U.S. population. And Steve, with, with all the data here, I'm sure there's a, a lot of information at, at lower levels. We talked about this in the aggregate, but what are some other key takeaways or additional insights that you see when looking at this information at lower levels from the report? Yeah, it's interesting to note that for typical working ages, and, and especially I think the 35 to 54, we're actually seeing the highest excess mortality on a relative basis, higher at 35 to 54, than we are the lower ages or the higher ages. And, and that's a, an issue that we really saw uh, on an extreme basis back in third quarter of last year during the Delta wave, where the uh, 35 to 54 was being hit the hardest. So that's continuing now, but thankfully not as extreme now. And, and then one other thing I was gonna mention is that the less than 55 excess mortality 
is certainly not being driven just by COVID deaths. And, and in fact, the less than 55, the non-COVID excess mortality is a much bigger driver on a percentage basis at less than 55 than the non-COVID excess mortality is at 55 and older. Very interesting. Something to pay attention to as future surveys uh, come about. Well, Patrick and Steve, many thanks for stopping by to discuss this really important report that examines U.S. group term life insurance mortality results during the COVID-19 pandemic through March of 2022. My pleasure, Dale. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Dale. Always happy to talk about our research. If you have any feedback or questions about this report, simply contact us at research at SOA.org. This group life COVID-19 mortality survey running all the way through March of 2022 as an update can be found on SOA.org by clicking on our research institute and then simply click on COVID-19. Thanks for joining us today to learn more about the projects from the Society of Actuaries Research Institute.